Hey y'all, good morning everybody. Happy Saturday. We're just gonna give it just a moment so that everybody can come on in to the goodness of campus living and learning. I know this is one of the most exciting sessions of the day for most folks. It's housing is just such a special and exciting part of going off to college. And so we're so glad that you've chosen to join us uh, for this 11 o'clock session of campus living and learning. Uh, my name is Clarissa Templin. I'm the transfer admissions coordinator here. Um, and while I'm not the expert on housing, I just get the pleasure of being the moderator. And so uh, while Mr. Ian Philbrick goes through the presentation and just shares all the wonderful information about housing on campus, I'll be in the Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout this time, please just use the Q&A feature at the bottom to ask your questions and I will answer whatever I can. And then we'll actually have some time uh, for some live Q&A with Ian at the end. And so again, we're so glad that you're here, but without further ado, Ian, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Clarissa. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for your interest in Baylor and for your interest in campus living and learning. That's our fancy name for housing. My name is Ian, as Clarissa said, and I'm excited to introduce you to, to campus living and learning at Baylor. I'm going to try and run through our values and what we hope uh, you'll experience living on campus. I want to talk about the faculty and staff support that we have for students on campus. We invest a lot in that, and I want you to know what's available there. I'm going to talk to you about the community types. You can start thinking about where you might want to live if you choose to come to Baylor. I'm going to talk to you about the different floor plans. So you can also think about the style of room you might be interested in. And then finally, how to apply. Uh, at the end, I will have time for questions. I'm going to try to run through this quickly, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, and then take the last 10 minutes for any questions you have. So let's start by just talking uh, here about our values. Uh, we, we hope if you remember one thing from, from this page and about our values, we hope that you form meaningful relationships and you build relational community during your time on campus. So if you actually start by looking to the right on the slide, relationships, faculty interaction, that's a huge part of the on-campus experience. Our residence halls are designed in a way where there are a lot of community spaces and then there's a lot of staff and they're geared towards helping you find your friends, the places you fit in, the place you belong, so that Baylor quickly begins to feel like a home for you. And then if you kind of look on the left-hand side of the, the slide, connectedness is not just about connecting with other people. We'd say that's the most important thing, but we also want you to connect to the resources Baylor has as a campus. And so that means getting connected to where your classes are at, understanding where the libraries are at, uh, knowing where the dining halls are at, the gym, and then being connected to campus events. That could be athletic events, music events, and then just social events that are taking place on Baylor's campus. So I want to move in now and talk a little bit more about the staff support that we offer in our residence halls. I'm going to go clockwise here, starting kind of in the top right with our community leaders. Your community leader might be the very first person you meet when you come to campus at Baylor. Um, they are peers. They're undergraduate students who live on every single floor in a residence hall and are there to mentor and guide uh, incoming students as they begin their time at Baylor. Uh, next up, we have resident chaplains. These are graduate students who are enrolled at Baylor's Truett Seminary, and they're there to provide spiritual guidance and support. They'll often come alongside students as they're going through difficult times uh, but they're they're both a spiritual uh, advisor and supporter, and then also just a, an, an older student who's meant to support students as they adjust to life on a college campus. Uh, next up, we have our faculty and residents. Next year will be the first year that every single Baylor residential community has a faculty and residence. And so this is a full-time Baylor faculty member that lives in the residence hall with students. Uh, on the one hand, they're there to to integrate academics within the hall, but more so than that, they're there to humanize Baylor faculty to help students understand these are people just like the rest of us. You don't need to be intimidated by your professors. They generally live in the halls with their families. You'll often see the spouse and kids, sometimes a dog, uh, and, and they're just involved in the life of the hall. And so it's a great way to connect with a faculty member to hopefully help you just have a different perspective of a faculty member than what you might get only from the classroom. Finally, we have residence hall directors. These are full-time staff who are, whose job is to oversee the hall, to manage the hall, to make sure that you're having a good experience uh, within that space. So a few on-campus quick facts. If you live on campus, you would be joining over 4,500 other Baylor students who, who call uh, one of our residence halls home. And we hope 
And we believe that your living environment influences your social relationships, your spiritual growth and academic journey. And we hope that the on-campus experience really positively influences each of those three areas. Those are three key goal areas for us as campus living and learning. Uh, all incoming first-year students do have a one-year residency requirement. And the reason for that is everything we just talked about, the desire to get you connected to people and to resources. And we think the best way to do that is to spend your first year on campus. Uh, we have a number of different residence halls and room types, and we're going to get more into that now. I'm going to start with our communities. So we have three different types of on-campus communities at Baylor. The first type is a living learning community. 40% of our incoming class lives in a living learning community. And these are communities that are built around a, a shared value or theme. It's either academic or it's an extracurricular area. And so I'm gonna dive into the six types of living, living learning communities we have in a moment. But this is the first overarching type of living learning community built around a shared academic or extracurricular theme. Our, our uh, second type is a residential college. And so this is probably our strongest community type on campus because students who live here sign a two-year living agreement. And so they'll spend both their freshman and sophomore year in this residential college. Because of that, they're especially strong, tight-knit communities because students simply have more time with the same people. Uh, if you want to guarantee yourself a space on campus for both your first and your second year, I would encourage you to think about a residential college. A space on campus is tight right now. Baylor's going through a residence hall renovation plan. And because of that, we're having to close residence halls each year as we renovate them. And so if you know you'd like to be on campus for two years, consider a residential college. You'll have the benefit of a, of a tight knit community and you'll have the guarantee of having two years on, on Baylor's campus. 15% uh, of our incoming class live in residential college. And then we have our first year communities. Uh, I, I say the name is a little bit misleading in that the living learning communities are almost all first year students as well. Um, but the difference with first year is it's not almost all first year, it's all first year students. And also it's not tied around an academic or extracurricular theme. Uh, it's, it's just more broad based and uh, there's students who are coming together. The goal in the first year community is just to help you settle in connect to the resources on campus, build friendships, and then it's for one year. And after that first year, you could go into our upper division housing or you could go off campus, hopefully with some of the friends you've made in that first year community. So I wanna dive in a little bit more to these types of, of communities. Living learning communities, we have six types. And so they're, they're listed here around the outside of the slide. If you're really paying attention, you'll notice that three of them are tied to academic disciplines and three of them are tied to kind of extracurricular interests. So we have fine arts, business and innovation, and science and health, which are tied to academic units. And then we have our Baylor and Beyond, which is about multiculturalism, impact and lead, which is all about leadership, and then outdoor adventure, which I think is pretty straightforward, but much to do with being outside and, and taking trips to, to enjoy the outdoors. And so those are kind of our extracurricular themed living learning communities. Again, these are one year, uh, living agreements, and then you can apply to live there again if you'd like to return. And about 40% of our first year students live in living learning communities. Next up, we have these residential colleges. So our two year uh, living agreements. Honors Residential College is for students in Baylor's Honors Program, and Teal Residential College is for engineering, computer science, and nursing students. If you are someone who loves the idea of the tighter knit community, having your first two years on campus, but you're not an honor student, or you're not an engineering, computer science, or nursing student, you should consider Brooks Residential College. It's interdisciplinary, so it's open to students across all disciplines, and it's a, it's a great place to live if you value the residential college experience, but you just don't happen to fit in one of the majors that the Honors College or Teal Residential College is, is looking for. And then finally, we have our traditional first-year communities. Uh, again, 40, 45% of our first-year students live, live here. I do want to note uh, I need to get our slides updated because next year, Collins Hall, it will also be a first year community option. And so you could add Collins Hall. It's an all female hall uh, that's being renovated right now and will reopen next year. And then next year, Texana House and University House, which you currently see on the slide, will actually not be available to first year students. 
So that, that's a slight change. Pretend Texan and University say Collins, and, and this slide is, is up to date. All right, I want to talk to you all next about not just the community types we have, but floor types. And so we, we have four major floor plan layouts at Baylor. Um, first of all, there's a community style. And this is for you if you do not like cleaning the bathroom. This is the one style where Baylor housekeeping staff will take care of a bathroom. So you'll have a, a little bit of a smaller room that's, that's really meant for sleeping and studying. we will have you know, your beds, your desks, your dressers, and then you'll have a large community bathroom on the floor that you share with other people on your floor. You'll have study spaces on the floor and, and lobby spaces too, where you can study and hang out. And so your room is, is meant primarily for sleeping and studying. Then you'll have that large community bathroom and other social spaces in the hall. Uh, next, we have a shared bath style. This is, this is a style where you'll likely have a couple rooms with a bathroom in between. And so in this style, you do need to clean your own bathroom, but you'll have a little more privacy. And so you can weigh what's more important the privacy or not having to clean my bathroom. Our last two styles are apartment styles. The first suite style, it's called suite style because it doesn't have a kitchen, but, but it really is similar to an apartment. You'll have a living room, multiple bedrooms, multiple bathrooms. You're responsible for cleaning all of those things within your suite. And then the apartment style is the same thing, but you get to add on a kitchen. So you'll have the kitchen, the living room, the multiple bathrooms, the multiple bedrooms, and you and your apartment uh, mates will be responsible for cleaning all of that. Now, some, some people ask about pricing. Generally speaking, pricing uh, gets more expensive as you move left to right across the slide. Here's a real quick look at what is provided in, in the rooms. Uh, you'll receive a bed, a desk, a chair, closet space, and a dresser. Uh, in, in some of the halls, the beds are lofted, like you see in this picture, but not in all of them. It, it depends a little bit on the size of the room. And if the rooms are a little bit smaller, we'll, we'll loft the beds. If they're a little bit bigger, uh, we don't always loft them. But here's a, here's a real quick peek at uh, what's provided in a room. And this, this room here, in case you're curious, would be a community style room. So it's one of those little bit smaller rooms. Then you have the community bathroom and the common spaces uh, that you can utilize uh, on the floor in the hall. All right, I wanna talk you through how you apply. How do you actually uh, get to live on campus at Baylor? And so uh, if this is far away for you. Uh, I'm sorry if this is close, uh, maybe pay attention here, but the application process opens on March 1. So on, on some level, it's a little ways away for everybody, but that might be a date to remember. And then May 1 is our deadline if you wanna participate in roommate matching and choose your own room. And, and I'm gonna explain what those things mean here uh, through these next couple slides. So how do you begin your application? Well, first you have to go through Go Baylor, accept your admittance to Baylor and submit an enrollment deposit. Once you've accepted your admission, submitted an enrollment deposit, you then have to set up your bear ID and password, which will sort of be your lifeline once you're at Baylor. You'll use that to get into everything. Uh, once you've set up your bear ID and password, you can begin your housing application starting on March 1 through your My Housing portal. This slide is actually a, a screenshot of our website it's a little bit blurry, but in the top right, you see that, that key and it says My Housing. So anytime you're on Campus Living and Learning's website, you just go up to that top right, that'll always be there, My Housing login. And that's how you log into your My Housing portal. When you begin your housing application, you're gonna be as excited as the guy on this slide, but also here's what you need to do. You will start by selecting your top four communities. So we talked about those six living learning communities you could pick from, three residential colleges you could pick from, or you can select first year community. And that's actually just one selection. All first year communities are categorized together, just called first year community. So you have 10 choices. You would rank your top four choices. You would tell us why you're, you put them in that order, why you're hoping to live where you live. And then you're gonna complete a lifestyle matching profile and roommate matching. I'm gonna go on to the next slide to tell you a little bit more about that. Lifestyle questions are meant to help pair you up with someone that you would live well with. So they're going to ask you questions about what's the room temperature at? Uh, what time do you like to go to bed? What time do you like to wake up? Are you an introvert? Or are you an extrovert? What's your preferred level of cleanliness? And you'll, you'll answer these questions. Hopefully you answer them honestly. Uh, and hopefully you get paired up with someone who, who lives a similar way as you do and, and you make a good roommate match. Another way you can roommate match is you could actually search for people. So a lot of our students uh, connect with people through social media and they, and they meet someone online and they say, hey, I wanna look at this person. You could search for their bear ID, find that person. You could roommate match that way. As a reminder to participate in roommate matching, you do have to complete your housing application by May 1st. The last step in the process is you're gonna find out 
uh, what community you're approved for. If you remember back early on, you got to rank your top four. You'll get placed in a community. You can, you can roommate match in that community, and now you get to choose your room. I just tell people this looks like Amazon. It really is very similar. You go in, you, you add a room type to your cart, you check out, and you have just booked yourself uh, to live on campus for the next year at Baylor. Uh, anytime, no matter where you're at in the application, you can go back to Campus Living and Learning's webpage. This, this slide's a little bit more clear. You can see up there in the top right corner, we have that My Housing key and button. Again, that's always going to be on our webpage. That's where you log in. You can get into your housing application and you can see your status. So March 1st, remember that date. That's when it opens. May 1st, that's the deadline if you want to roommate match and choose your own room. Uh, and that's the presentation. I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Clarissa, and I think she's going to toss any questions my way. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ian. That's always so exciting to hear about all the housing options that students have. So quite a few questions have come in. I've tried to answer as many as I can. Um, there's some that I think will just be wonderful to actually hear you say aloud. And so uh, one of our students asked, um, I know there's an overflow of freshmen one year and they had to live in the hotel across the street. Based off the experiences I heard from some of them, it's pretty sweet for the same price. That is so true living in brand new hotel it's awesome uh would that still be an option next year and maybe the following and so do you have any insight on that i do so our plan right now is to not offer the hotel next year uh, if we have a had a major uh overflow of students again it you know that could come back on the table um the truth about the hotel is it's an incredible facility at, at a very good price um, but it is a little bit removed from campus. And so that's what we are we are hoping to get all of our students back on the main campus. And uh, that's why we're moving away from it. If we have a, an open flow again, we'll offer it, but at this point, we're not doing it. Awesome. I know it, it turned out to be really terrific for our students, but um, truly, as, as amazing as the hotel is, the on-campus housing will be even better. So that's good to hear. Kind of speaking of that, um, Collins is always a hot question. And so someone asked, will the Collins renovation be ready for the 2023 to 2024 school year? Um, so, you know, incoming freshman next year. Um, and is there any kind of rendering of it available to see? Yeah, great questions. Yes, it will be ready for, for next year's class. And so if, if you are planning to come to Baylor next year, it'll be an option on your housing application. You would preference a first year community. And that's what would potentially give you access to Collins. Uh, there, we do not have renderings of it on our website yet, but we will. So as we draw closer to that March 1st opening date uh, for the application, we'd be closer to, to the students going in and completing that. Uh, there will be uh, more renderings. And as you go through the application, you might have noticed that last slide towards the end that I said looked like Amazon. That's where there'll be kind of the pictures of the different room types of what they look like. And we'll have those for columns too uh, once we get to that point. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we've got another question. It's pretty classic. We are a Christian school. And so I think stu people, students, parents are always curious about what co-ed or split gender really means. And so can you share a little bit more about what that relationship looks like in our dorms, boys, girls, visitation hours, et cetera? Yes, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Whoever threw that in there. Uh, we have a lot of different options. So I hope we have an option that fits uh, what you're looking for. We have some halls that are all one gender. And so if you want to be in a hall that's entirely one gender, uh, that option is available. And then we have halls that are split gender, but they're either split by floor or there might be multiple genders on the same floor, but they're split by half of the floor. And the most important thing to know is there's always a wall or locked door between the men and women. And so men can go to the women's side, but they have to have a female student who brought them over and escorted them. And females can go to the male side, but they need a male to escort them and bring them over. And so there, there is, um, you have to have someone who has access and only women are gonna have access to the women's area and men will have access to the men's area. In terms of visitation hours, uh, you can have opposite gender visitors from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. And then from 1 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, every day, it needs to be all women on the female side and all men on the male side. Awesome, thank you. Uh, let's see, do all students get housing if they want? Is there any preference to give in to out-of-state students? Yeah, so all first-year students are guaranteed housing. There is not a preference given to out-of-state students beyond just saying we guarantee you that we will have space for you. And so, uh, yes, it is a first-year student, you're guaranteed housing. After that, you're not. 
um, unless you sign up for a residential college, and then you would also have it guaranteed for your second year. Awesome. Let's see. Somebody also asked about how do you select housing for your sophomore through your senior year if you're not on campus housing? Um, and so if you have any information to share about off-campus housing, I can always jump into because I get that a lot as well, but I would love to hear your insight. Sure. Yeah, Cl Clarissa might be able to speak to this better than I can because I'm so kind of focused on on-campus housing, but there is a website called College Pads that you can search Baylor on, and that's kind of the new website we're pushing people towards. Then that's going to list most of the on-campus, or excuse me, the off-campus properties that are near Baylor. So that's a great website to go to if you're interested in being off-campus and seeing what's available, seeing rates and facilities. First, anything you'd add? Yeah, awesome. So this actually pairs well with another question too that was asked, so I'll kind of cover both of them. As a transfer coordinator, I work with a lot of students, um, like as transfers, you don't have to live on campus. And so uh, most of our transfers do live off campus. So we've got a great off-campus housing page. If you just go onto our website, um, and I can try to get that direct link as well to throw in the Q&A, but um, if you just go on our website and you search off-campus housing, a whole wonderful page will show up. We've got ways for you, even if you're living off campus, to submit some information to hopefully Hopefully get paired with other students who are living off campus as well. So it's a kind of like a roommate matching profile as well for off campus students. There's also a whole host of just different information about helping you find local apartments um, and even some very helpful information about you know, how to work with landlords, what it means to sign your lease and all the informational pieces that perhaps you haven't had to do before if you are coming straight from living on campus or straight from living with your parents. Um, we also have several Facebook pages that are terrific, uh, more geared towards transfer students. Um, again, if you are coming in and need to help finding roommates and finding housing. So you can reach out to us at admissions at baylor.edu if you wanna get some of those resources, but Truth be told, if you're coming in as a freshman and then you're worried about how do I find housing off campus after, there's just like a whole informal network. You know, you're going to find your roommates and your friends, and then you're going to look for apartments off campus together throughout your freshman year. And most students just organically find their next group of students um, and friends that they're going to live with and find a place together. Uh, but that also, like I said, swings into that other question about finding housing in Dallas if you are going straight into the School of Nursing. So they do not have any specific on campus housing or university housing up in Dallas for the nursing students. So if you're going there for your last two years, uh, the School of Nursing would be the best to connect with as a lot of students kind of grandfather each other in um, and help each other find housing um, with other local students. So that was a lot of information. But again, if you have any questions, just reach out admissions at baylor.edu and we'd be happy to help. Um, so let's see. Another question is um let's see trying to find there's a lot that just came in um oh this is terrific does each dorm have a secured entrance with someone checking in and checking out visitors what does security look like sure that is a good question so yes every residence hall has a secure entrance you'll have to use your baylor id card to swipe into the residence hall once you step into the residence hall there's the first thing you're probably going to see is the front desk the front desk is staffed daily from 7 a.m to 1 a.m so 18 hours a day and that includes weekends. Um, even when the front desk is not staffed, there are there are multiple staff in the hall that are on call, and that number is always available overnight. Uh, Baylor police are right on campus and always available overnight too for security help. Uh, I do want to say about the security of the hall: once you get into that main entrance, then you also have to swipe in through a wing entrance, and then once you get through the wing entrance, you also have to swipe and enter a passcode to get into a room. So there's really three levels to get to a room, uh, two main entrance, wing entrance, door entrance, plus passcode. And so the security is pretty strong. And then you add in the police presence, the front desk staff, and uh, it, it's a very secure campus. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, this is a great question. What if as a freshman, I got accepted into engineering and into the Teal Residential College, but as a sophomore decide to switch majors, would I be asked to leave the residential college? Yes, I'm, I'm really thankful you asked that question. Um, no, you would not. So you would essentially be grandfathered in. If you wanted to leave that community, I think they would make a way for you to do that. And you would have to live somewhere else on campus because you would still have signed that two-year on-campus agreement. Um, but they would not force you out. That does happen to students uh, all, the, all the time because students change their majors. <laughs> and so, but if you found community there, which we would hope you did, you would still be able to stay. Awesome. 
Sounds so good. We are right at time. So it's time for y'all students to head into your next session. Um, I did just put that link to the uh, off-campus housing. It's BaylorAreaHousing.com. Um, and so if y'all have any other questions about that, let us know. Again, I know there's several questions we just didn't have time to get to, but Ian and I will be back here in five minutes for the 1130 session of Campus Living and Learning, if you'd like to join that. But otherwise, all the contact information for Ian's office is right up there on the screen. Um, and so please reach out if you have any other questions. We are just so excited about the possibility of getting to welcome you into the Baylor family. So have a great rest of your day.